Dear Father and Mother, Nearly two weeks has gone past since I bid you goodbye. How time does go. I can hardly see how it has gone in what I have accomplished. I am well, with the exception of a slight cold I caught at Washington, having gone out of an evening without my overcoat. I am nearly rid of it. A few good days will drive it away. I was pleased to learn by Sarah's letter that father was no wiser and that dear mother was in her usual good health. Father must not spare expenses or fail to take the proper medicines. Because he has not taken such before is no reason he does not need such now. Medicine is proper at certain times. Yesterday was a very strong, rainy, discourageable day. Some of us were nearly drowned in our little huts and poor walled tents. Puddles of water stood in my tent, and Mr. Graham complains of his tent roof leaking badly. This bad weather has suspended all duty excepting guards. Today the sun has shone and the wind has blew a hurricane, completely drying up all the mud and mud puddles left yesterday by the rain. Colonel Vincent took his wife home on Friday last, and Mr. Graham says she will not leave until the last minute, probably the very first day of April. We are expecting Captain Austin here every day. Good night, your son, John. Dear father, mother, sister, and brother, Yesterday found us back to our old camping grounds after a life of excessive tribulations in the woods of ten days. Four slight casualties are the extent of our loss. Corporal Graff of Company B, Hayes of Company D, Jonathan Albo, and O.S. Kinnear of Company I. We all thank God we have been so fortunate. I've not seen a paper since the engagement began. Thankful I am ignorant of the details. Sarah's letter, dated the 26th of April, was received this afternoon mail. Also her photograph. We'll answer in a day or two, and we'll write you of the particulars of the doings of the 83rd when I have rested and got some of the dirt off. Your son, John. Dear Parents, We had a cavalry fight yesterday. Pleasanton drove the enemy into Ashby's Gap, and the 3rd Brigade, Colonel Vincent, supported them. There were several killed and wounded, but I have heard of none in the 83rd. Love to all, your son, John. Miss. Your favor of the sixth instance was received by me yesterday. In answer to your queries in regard to your late brother, I beg leave to say that I was with him at the time of his death, arriving there only a short time before that event transpired, say twenty minutes. At the time of my arrival, he had just been removed from a barn in the vicinity. He was apparently weak, and on my inquiring, he stated that he suffered considerable pain, principally in his breast. I saw that he was very low, but supposed that he was suffering from the effects of his removal. 
I immediately sent for one of the surgeons, who on his arrival stated that he would not live an hour. I was, as you may suppose, extremely surprised, having suspected that there was no danger of the final result. I remained some five minutes conversing with the physician in regard to his care, whence he told me that he would not live ten minutes. In about that time he expired, without apparently experiencing the slightest of pain. He went off as calmly as I ever saw anyone. A few convulsive gasps, and all was over. I got all of his personal effects and handed them to Adjutant Clark, and also made the necessary arrangements with him to have the body properly interred. He was wounded about five and a half o'clock on the afternoon of the 2nd of July by a shell striking him on the leg below the knee, which nearly carried the lower half of the limb entirely away. It was attached merely by a piece of skin. He could not be immediately removed owing to the fact that we had been temporarily driven back. As soon, however, as we regained the lost ground, which was about an hour afterwards, he was carried to the rear and the amputation was performed by Dr. Howard of the Artillery Corps, he being under the influence of chloroform. The best possible care under the circumstances was bestowed upon him, and I am informed by those who conversed with him on the morning of the 3rd that he expected to finally get well, but he had lost so much blood on the field before being removed that he had succumbed to that ruthless destroyer, death. He was indeed, as you say, a good brother, and in his death the regiment lost one of its best officers, and the country a true patriot. I can deeply sympathize with you in this deep bereavement. I should have written before this, offering you what little consolation lies in my power, but I deemed that you might consider it presumptuous in me, an entire stranger. As you truly say, God's will be done. He knows what is best for our good, and as it was his will to take poor John away, we should not grieve too much over it, but bow with humble submission and reflect that Jesus has taught us to say, Thy will be done. I should indeed be but too happy to accept a likeness of John if you have one to spare. If there was anything further you wish to inquire about, please do not have the slightest hesitancy in writing me for information, as I will feel but too happy in doing anything that may tend to comfort you in your deep affliction. With a renewal of my heartfelt sympathies, I remain very respectfully at your service, William H. Edmund. If you'd like to learn more about Captain John Sell and the 83rd Regiment of Pennsylvania Volunteers, the links to all of the source material are in the video description below. And if you enjoyed today's video and would like to see more content like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell to stay up to date with the latest bird dog videos.